Who is he? What is his name? What does he want? This is the story of the secret ninth slug cat. Wow, well that was a dramatic intro. Invis a secret slug cat added to downpour. It can only be accessed by secret means. Woo. In order to unlock Inv, you must- For some reason I can't say the answer. That's a bit weird. Is there like a pair of riddles you must solve in order to access this slug cat or something? There is. Um, that was a rhetorical question. Who are you? I am the Riddle Guardian, Scholar of Riddle. Uh, okay, state your riddles then. With pleasure. Chant his name upon seven or eight, inscribe bricks of the pillar. His name can be found in the door of the desert. Wow, what crazy riddles. FYI, some community knowledge is needed to solve these riddles. I'm gonna let this tape I found at a car boot sale play, and we'll reveal the answer afterwards. So pause the video and solve the Riddle Guardian's riddles, or keep watching to know the answers. I'll be sad if you don't solve my riddles. Alright, time's up. The answer to the first riddle is the main menu screen, as seven or eight inscribed bricks symbolise the menu options. The answer to the second riddle is Thothanthiel, which is the community given name to the drone that opens the Metropolis Gate for Artificer. So to unlock Inv, you must type Thothanthiel into the main menu screen. Before we get into this secret Slugcats campaign, we must first talk about the origins of Thothanthiel. Four years ago, on September 1st, 2018, Sothanthia was born. In the More Slugcats Discord server, an image was posted to the announcement channel. It was a harmless image of a shelter being placed inside a train. However, the reactions to the image show a more sinister tale. <laughs> they spelt the name Sothanthia. Sothanthia then became a funny meme on the server. The general consensus was that Artificer's drone was called Sothanthia. The shelter depicted in the origin image had Sothanthia graffiti added to it. But little did the community know, the Sothanthiel slug cat was insidiously created. So to summarise, Sothanthiel represents three different beings. The drone, the shelter, and the slug cat. Which is eerily similar to a best-selling book called the Bible. I mean, the slug cat's literally being crucified here, I'm starting to see a bit of a religious theme. Fun fact, you can actually visit the Sothanthiel shelter in-game. You can find it in the floor of the metropolis to the left. Although it looks different from its first rodeo, the graffiti still remains. As for the Sothanthiel slug cat, it grew to have many different names, as it snuck into the recesses of the Rainworld community. Now let's actually talk about this campaign. For the rest of this video, I'm going to be calling the slug cat Inv, as that's what it's referred to as in the game files. Inv is probably short for inverted, as it's just inverted survivor. Other popular names for this slug cat are Enot and Nightcat. Those names are valid, but I'm not using them in this video. Here is the Slugcat select screen for Inv. Its description reads, Thanks Andrew. This is in reference to the meme where the lead developer, Andrew FM, implemented malicious or tormenting things into Rainworld. For example, Challenge 70 could be considered a Thanks Andrew moment. There is a funny easter egg where if you wait long enough on the Slugcat select screen, a conversation will play between Andrew FM and Applebread, who is a famous streamer. I'll let you listen to it. Hey, I'm gonna check out my sweet new mods. Why did you play him for me? It'll be pretty sweet, yo. Oh yeah, sure, no problem. We'll definitely play them. Surely nothing will be bad, bad or wrong about this. Oh yeah, they're really cool. Yo, 
You'll have a great time with them. Oh, thanks, man. This looks fun. <laughs> yeah, you'll have lots of fun. <laughs> Jumping into a campaign, we can observe that Inv starts in memory crypt and during a shelter failure. Inv's campaign is meant to be ridiculously unfair. It's similar to those Mario mods that are really hard, called Kaizos. One fun addition to the Inv campaign is that every cycle starts with a shelter failure, guaranteed. In most cases, this causes the shelter to break and be unusable for the next few cycles. This could be a benefit though, as it increases the time until the lethal rain arrives. Another fun Inv mechanic is that he requires 12 food to hibernate. There is a relief to this, however, as Inv is omnivorous and can eat meat at half the efficiency as well as the food that normal slug cats eat. It's basically the same as how Gourmand works. Inv is also physically weaker than other slug cats, dealing about the same damage as Monk. He also has Artificer's Maul ability, which allows him to deal small damage to stunned creatures. Inv's final ability is that he starts with a Singularity Bomb every cycle. This Singularity Bomb is actually an Egg Zero, which is Andrew FM's icon. Singularity Bombs are incredibly OP, and they can one-shot pretty much every creature aside from iterators. This makes Inv's journey incredibly reliant on these eggs. Inv also has custom sound effects. When thrown around a bit, Inv makes a grunting sound. And if the player dies, an ethereal voice tells the player of their failures. Rest in peace, gamer. Night, gamer. Game over, gamer. Good night, gamer. Honestly, these voice lines are so fucking good, I can't, I can't lie. Slug pups in this game mode have now become cursed beings. They are all black with the face. If one tragically dies, it releases a singularity explosion, similar to the egg. After its unfortunate passing, an egg is spawned in the location it died. This makes slug pups viable as a weapon, as you can gain two explosions out of them. Alright, time to move on to the region changes. Most of the regions have their spawns buffed, with red centipedes, red lizards, and mirror birds appearing frequently throughout them. Also, most regions now have a unique gimmick, which makes exploring them harder and weirder. Aside from the spawns, Shaded Citadel and Shoreline haven't been touched. Looks to the Moon, however, is unconscious, with her structure containing green energy sparks, as well as iterator-based organisms. Although this mode is definitely not canon, this evidence would unironically put Inv's campaign between a hunter and artificer on the timeline. Farmerays is now infested with wormgrass, as if it wasn't already. New spots of the stuff have been added everywhere, as well as existing spots increased in density. Also, some of the wormgrass is camouflaged, making it hard to spot. Chimney Canopy has a unique gimmick of making jumping hard. Every time Inv jumps, he won't gain much height from it, and will get exhausted afterwards, similar to Gourmand's Tuckered Out. However, a yeek spawns every time Inv exits a pipe. These things vibrate with motion, allowing Inv to traverse Chimney Canopy with moderate success. Sky Islands has been iteratified, with zero gravity, light rods, and the rot being added to the region. Instead of killing you, falling off the map teleports you to the other side of the room, which is how it works in the Rubicon. In Subterranean, staying too long in a single room causes darkness to enshroud Inv. This can be cured by moving to another room. Make sure you have a lantern or neuron glow if you go here. Industrial Complex contains a new lizard variant, the Train Lizard. They are basically a more lethal version of a red lizard without the tongue or spit. Their name, Train Lizard, derives from the fact that they are incredibly fast and large, similar to a train. They are originally from a mod called the Hurricane mod, which was an old mod that made the game harder. Outskirts has been renamed to We Forgot to Render This One, sorry. It depicts the outskirts rooms before any shading or palettes were added, making them look ugly and unappealing. There also seems to be tons more red enemies, such as this room having like five red centipedes. Garbage Wastes is now called Nachos Will Never Be The Same. It's called this because lethal nacho cheese dip has been added to the region. This turns Garbage Waste into an absolute hellscape, with many of the rooms being incredibly hard to traverse. Drainage System has now been renamed to Painage System, which is the deserved name change. This is because snails now explode during their shockwave attack, which makes them act like landmines here. And to add salt to the wound, snails will randomly spawn in the room Inv is in, making the room incredibly dangerous for the remainder of the cycle. The exterior has become dark and filled with rot, and in some places zappers. 
The leg has been renamed to Tower of Gains, and the underhang being renamed to Uberhang. The rot makes this region incredibly difficult, maybe the hardest region in this mode. However, persevering gets you to 5 pebbles. Zero gravity in 5 pebbles has mostly been disabled, and replaced with large bodies of yellow liquid. Areas like Unfortunate Development have the yellow liquid frequently change in altitude violently. Getting to pebbles results in this conversation. Goodbye, gamer. Pipeyard has now been renamed to Tubes, and now has a palette that constantly changes colour. Sump Tunnel has now been renamed to Moist. A secret new Pipeyard subregion is accessible. It goes by the name Andrew's Basement. This is a reference to the meme where Andrew FM, the lead developer, is displayed as a psychotic individual and trapped the more slug cats developments in the basement. If Inv quietly and covertly infiltrates the basement, he can find the devs trapped there for all eternity. In the form of artwork, that is. That's most of the campaign changes in Paz. I might have missed a few. If you want to beat this game mode for yourself, I recommend following the detailed guide by Gorilla and Cosmic, which I'll link in the description below. Now something special happens when you manage to ascend as this character. Beating Inv starts the dating simulator. In this secret game mode, you still play as Inv on his quest to find a mate. You meet with the five downpour slug cats and get up to a bit of tomfoolery with them. I feel like this game mode is best experienced by yourself, so I'm not going to cover it in detail. So all you need to do is beat this campaign. But Balagaga, didn't you say this is a Kaizo game mode? Well, you can shamelessly cheat your way to the end of the game using warp mod and teleporting to subterranean L01, which is what I did. Or you can install the Slugcat Dating Sim mod by CADW, which lets you access the dating simulator straight from the menu. This makes full playthroughs a lot easier, so I recommend you check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. I'll also link all dating simulator endings in the description below, in case you don't own Downpour. Alright, that's gonna do it for this video. I might cover the dating simulator in more detail later, however it is not on my priority list. What is on my priority list is more long form content like this video, so hit like and subscribe if you want to see more, or leave a video idea you want to see made in the description below. <laughs> Alright, enough of the corny outro, thanks for watching and I'll see you all later.